682 here it is time for another GI Joe toy review and today we're going to be looking at a, a pretty popular action figure uh, his first release was an 84 uh, that was the uh, spirit version one uh, this one is the uh, spirit version two which was released in 89 uh, also known as the Slaughter's Marauder Spirit. Yeah, he is a part of the 8th series in uh, the toy line. Uh, he uh, was on the shelves from 89 until 91 when he was discontinued. Uh, his original retail price was $2.29. Now Spirit, for some reason, out of all of the Marauders, uh, save for Sergeant Slaughter, is very popular. Uh, he is sought after uh, by collectors and fetches a higher price. Um, a problem with the, the Slaughter's Marauders the the plastic they used was a little bit different so most of them you'll find with their thumbs broken off uh, i found particularly if um, their hands are painted uh, uh, such as low light um, and of course spirit uh, they they have gloves that are painted blue uh, I didn't have that problem with um, uh, barbecue, uh, the Slaughter's Marauders barbecue. He, for some reason, is just a, a different grade of plastic. Uh, I will talk more about him when, when I review him. Uh, this is one I did not have as a child. Uh, the only two Slaughter's Marauders I had were um, barbecue and Footloose and um, I purchased those two from a store called Yellow Front it was a general store um, kind of like um, Dollar General in a way um, you, I wouldn't be surprised if it is the same store or at least the same company um, is Dollar General the store is the front of the store is yellow and yellow front got the name because the front of the store is yellow and uh, it had anything you could think of in there um, so I had one pretty close to my house so I take my paper route money and run down there and buy um, Joe's when I had a chance so uh, that's where I picked up uh, barbecue and footloose and not to mention uh, you know quite a few other Joe's at that time so unfortunately yellow front is not around anymore uh, that location um, for those of you who live in Arizona or who are familiar with Arizona the location that I'm referring to was on Ellsworth Road and Apache Trail um, and it's kind of ironic that I'm mentioning um, Apache Trail right now um, because on the file card it mentions something about Arizona. We'll, we'll cover that when I um, review or get into that segment. Um, but that is um, the Yellow Front is now a um, well, was a checker. I haven't been in that part of town for quite a few years, um, but it was turned into a checker auto parts or an O'Reilly, depending on what part of the, the, the country you're from. Uh, so that was the last I saw of it was, it was turned into an auto parts store. So I miss that place on um, the old front was a really neat store uh, they have a lot of my money <laughs> so 
Uh, without any further uh, gum flapping here, let's go ahead and take a look at Spirit's uh, very cool action figure. All right, so here he is, Spirit. Uh, I actually have part of the card back. Uh, so you can see what he he looked like on the card back. Um, there are the, the rest of the Marauders here on the back and the figures that were released in 88 through 89. Uh, pretty cool that I have that. Uh, the gentleman I bought this from was selling all of his son's G.I. Joe's to help him get college tuition. So, um, this is a great example of Spirit. Um, he was hardly played with, according to the seller. Uh, you see the paint is pristine. Um, I would call this mint condition. Looks like he was just taken off the card, actually. Now, the, the Marauders, they all have this, this paint scheme. Uh, usually on their hands, the paint's chipped off of their gloves. So, we have Spirit here, who um, ironically doesn't have... Uh, some decent eyebrows are kind of painted down low, but that gives him a very menacing stare. So I think they uh, achieved that goal with him. Uh, he is the uh, second of two Native Americans on the Joe team. Uh, the first one was um, Airborne. Uh, and he showed up in the cartoons uh, seldom, but he was there. So looking at Spirit, you can see he's decked out in this really cool camo. On his left leg, he does have a um, antler-handled knife, which is very um, Native American. And he also has another knife here on his chest. It has tassels. If you could see that uh, right along the sheath. Looks like a couple of grenades. Uh, he has a blue undershirt underneath his, his uh, top shirt. Uh, sleeves rolled up. Around the back it's fairly plain, but you could see that they had sculpted in some texture there some wrinkles two back pockets on this leg he has uh, more tassels he is wearing moccasins which is pretty cool here on the side you can see that he has um, leather tines that are tied around um, a little fur up at the top uh, very cool figure um, Wearing a blue headband and his hair done up in Native American uh, tradition. Uh, I think that's a good look on him. Uh, let's try to get him to stand up here. Okay, we're going to get into his accessories. Um, this is one of my least favorite accessories for him. He has what is described as an arrow shooting rifle. Uh, I don't like that. Uh, it's a cool looking weapon, without a doubt. But uh, give the man a standard machine gun, please, instead of an arrow shooting rifle. It's a silent weapon, which, okay, that's pretty cool. Um, but nonetheless, give the guy a, a machine gun. Very nice sculpt on it. Has a scope here, and you can see the cartridge down here in the bottom with arrows on it. 
Uh, this is his ceremonial belt. It wraps around his waist. It's made out of a, kind of a soft plastic. Uh, very nicely done. Uh, he has some buckles and pouches on it. Uh, for some reason, the paint is sticky on that. Um, I don't know if it's the, the paint degrading. I tried cleaning it off with some alcohol and it just became sticky again. So, interesting uh, little side note there. He came with this really cool backpack with two more arrow cartridges. He has looks like smoke grenades here on the side. Uh, two buckles that go down the bottom of the backpack and the cartridge box up here. Pretty cool. And he came with his Eagle Freedom. Uh, American Bald Eagle. This is the same Freedom that came with the first Spirit. A uh, big problem with these finding them with the talons still intact. They're either completely broken off or um, one or both of these are missing. You could see this is pretty loose. So that's why I don't have him holding him. But uh, very nice detail done on him. Uh, G.I. Joe did have a lot of animal companions, uh, both on Joe and Cobra's side. Uh, very, very nice sculpting on the feathers. So, we're getting into the file card. There are um, some variants on this file card. Uh, I don't have the original Spirits file card, but I'll, I'll tell you what the changes are. But it reads, Codename Spirit uh, Tracker. His file name is Iron Knife Charlie, serial number 1465-1009-AP34, primary military specialty tracker, uh, secondary military specialty uh, car cartographer. Uh, he makes maps, draws out maps. Uh, his With version 1, his secondary specialty was social worker. His birthplace is Grand Canyon, Arizona. So that's why I mentioned it's kind of ironic that I uh, mentioned the Apache Trail, which is um, a pretty uh, historical road here in Arizona. Uh, it cuts through Apache Junction, Arizona. It was a part of the old uh, Route 66. But his grade is E5. He's a sergeant. Uh, middle paragraph reads, Spirit grew up in one of the most beautiful areas in the country, the Grand Canyon. He quickly learned every square inch of the canyons, many trails, and darker spots. What set Spirit apart from the rest of his contemporaries was his uncanny ability to know exactly where he was at all times. After enlisting in the Army, Spirit served in Southeast Asia, where he was commander of scout patrols. Now, as a member of Slaughter's Marauders, Spirit job, Spirit's job is to lead the unit through the most hostile combat zones to flush out Cobra agents and bring them in for interrogation. And a quote at the bottom, I'm assuming, is from Sergeant Slaughter says, this Indian is one tough warrior. He can smell out the enemy from 50 miles away. His sense of direction is as reliable as the most sophisticated radar systems in the armed forces. If you were on a pre-dawn mission with spirit in the middle of nowhere, and you haven't a clue as how to get back to the base, just stick with him and he will get you back in time for chow. Okay, so it's easy to see why he's such a, a cool action figure. Uh, he made many, many appearances in um, 
the um, Sunbow series. Uh, he was in the Pyramid of Darkness, uh, the Mass Device. Uh, he actually squared off against Storm Shadow. Uh, so he was Storm Shadow's polar opposite, um, the yin to the yang. Uh, they were both matched equally in martial arts. Uh, but personally, I feel that their battle was more spiritual and intellectual. Uh, there was a scene where uh, in the mass device where um, spirit had recovered a part of the device and he and storm shadow were fighting in this cave over the 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 part and uh, one of them pointed out this is pointless you know they're burning up all the oxygen in the cave through their fighting so they both agreed to cease arms and um, they both sat and meditated on what to do and they realized hey we could hold on to this part and ride this river down to an exit and they did um, they there's a natural spring that ran through this this cave and they made their exit and after they got out storm shadow Basically said, you saved my life, so take the part. Um, take what take what you need, and um, that was it. But they would face off throughout um, the series. Uh, another episode where spirit really shined was in um, the the episode countdown to for Zartan. Uh, where uh, Spirit is um, gets captured and he's locked up in this cell with uh, a scientist, um, uh, Professor Metier. He was uh, a Frenchman, and um, the Dreadnoks were torturing him in a way with laughing gas. And Spirit went in and. Or not spirit, but Storm Shadow went in and kicked the Dreadnought's butts and said, "This is no way to treat a noble warrior." And they opened up the the um, cell to vent out the laughing gas, but left Spirit locked up in there. And um, Spirit said, "Now it's time to leave." And Metier said, "How? Well, we don't have any weapons." And he took off his headband and he had a little throwing knife in there. And he said. They did not find this, and he said a quick prayer, Spirit, spirits of my fathers, guide my hand. He threw the knife and hit the button to release the cell doors. So he, Spirit was a, a very special individual um, on a very highly spiritual level. Um, and almost a shaman in a way. Uh, having lived in Arizona and uh, being uh, part of Rosebud Sioux, um, I was, my family, we were granted access to a powwow. And it was really special being there. Um, I could just feel the energy from the dancers. Um, I just engrossing myself into in the Native American culture and I, I really felt at home there it was it was really neat um, you know, watched several Kachina dances and the, their their elaborate costumes and it was just beautiful and everything was interpretive everything every motion every detail to their costumes have a meaning to them uh, one was the, the grass dance I was watching. Um, it was a dance to bring rain to, uh, if I could remember right, um, to help the grass grow. So uh, dances were prayers in a way. Uh, and my dad shared several stories of 
um, visiting the um, the the reservation um, in the Black Hills of South Dakota. Uh, he was actually given an Indian name of uh, Walks Tall and Cotton. And he got that name because he has had platinum blonde hair. So, you know, it looked like the, you know, cotton. Um, he shared a story where he was really sick. His parents couldn't afford much. So they brought him to um, a medicine man. And he was put in a sweat lodge and he was healed. And he was given a, a medicine bag to wear around his neck and told to never open it. It's strictly taboo to open your medicine bags. So um, they healed him. And uh, just really neat stories like that. So a um, little bit of my culture, or I should say mine, I'm white as they come, but of the, the Native American culture, uh, uh, they're very special people. Uh, I have quite a few friends who are Native American, um, uh, Pimas and Salt Rivers. Uh, I knew one Apache. Uh, Calvin Easton was his name. Actually, he was the first uh, Native American that I met out here when we moved here. Uh, very neat guy. I just loved hearing his stories. Um, I know his sister's still alive. I'm not sure if he is or not. Um, Calvin was quite a few years older than me. Um, I was eight, I'm nine, and he was in his mid-twenties, I think, at the time. But, um, yeah, he he shared stories of the Apaches and some of their customs, and I just loved talking to him. Uh, he was a very, very neat guy. He's quite an artist and musician as well uh, so uh, you know we've lost contact over the years as things go on but um, another guy I uh, went to school with Frank Pablo uh, is on the tribal council down in the Pima reservation um, down in southern Arizona uh, he worked for the uh, he was a gaming inspector for the casinos um, down there. Just a, he was a really cool guy. Uh, I met him in school. Uh, criminal criminal justice, actually. I was either I either wanted to be in healthcare or a cop, primarily healthcare. But if one failed, I could fall back on the other. So Frank went. We both got our criminal justice degrees. And he carried on with law enforcement. He was a, a ranger down on the reservation, and I never made it onto the police force. Um, so I continued on in medicine, and I'm very glad that I did. That was the right choice. Uh, so he and I would talk a lot about um, his culture, and he, he took me down to the res a few times and uh, ate traditional food down there. If you ever have a chance, get some fry bread. That stuff is awesome. You either get it with powdered sugar or refried beans. Oh, love fry bread. Uh, so there it is. There's a little bit on um, the Native American history in my family and some a, a bit about um, the culture that I know of. I'm not an expert at all. Uh, but uh, Spirit is a really cool action figure. Um, I especially loved Freedom. I played with him a lot when I was a kid. John had uh, version one of Spirit. Um, so I, I really liked Freedom. I like the eagle. I like eagles, uh, just birds in general, animals. You know how I am with animals. But um, this is a, a very very good example of uh, what it should look like. Uh, the paint, everything's pristine. He's in mint condition. I don't think uh, this gentleman's son ever played with it. 
um, just a I'm fortunate enough to fortunate to, to get this one um, in the condition that he's in because he does come at a, a very high price which brings me to my next segment my favorite segment Byron's Stripes as with any subset sub team the price goes up uh, the rarity no not really. They're unique. What I like about these sub teams is they brought back, they just reused old Joes. Sometimes they created a, oh, pardon me, new, a new action figure. But most of the time they were just repaints. And that gave everybody a chance to get that Joe that they possibly that they missed now in my case yes um, it was all of them <laughs> um, save for barbecue I had version one of barbecue but um, I got these like hey I get to at least have spirit or footloose or sergeant slaughter so um, the subsets always fetch a higher price especially the vehicles so if you're looking for him on the aftermarket I didn't find very many uh, for direct sale uh, most of them were auction uh, for you who are just joining me uh, I only use eBay as a reference I don't do this to pick on eBay, nor it, the sellers. I just do this for entertainment to give you a reference of what to expect and as far as um, money goes to, to purchase these. And yeah, these prices are just ridiculous. So um, let me get started here. His backpack, uh, $5 to $10.99. Now, ten ninety nine is incredibly ridiculous on that. Uh, be careful buying the backpack. Make sure that his backpack and rifle are black for version two, not tan or brown. Uh, those were the original... Um, weapons and the uh, battlefield accessory pack weapons so um, be careful with those his head is four dollars 75 cents complete uh, 68 dollars and 99 cents that is ridiculous i would not pay that for this action figure no matter how much i wanted it actually i did not pay anywhere near this amount for him um, carded um, anywhere from two hundred fifteen dollars to five hundred ninety nine dollars and ninety nine cents and the, the one for six hundred bucks is not graded the, the, these dudes are just misers all right um, just because it says GI Joe it does not make it valuable oh uh, in the case of the, the sub teams, yeah, uh, they do have a higher price. Um, they are a little more desirable. So, of course, that brings the price up and does make them a bit more valuable. Uh, his ceremonial belt uh, with the loincloths. It's with the, these two flaps here are loincloths. That's what I, the word I was trying to find, I was groping for when I was talking about the belt. Four ninety nine to five seventy nine. That's that's pretty a pretty decent price. I I would pay for that. His torso four seventy five to five o two. His legs three fifty eight. The waist piece seven seventeen to nine ninety five. That's pretty expensive, but waist pieces generally go for a higher price any of us who have ever played with gi joe know that the crotch breaks off uh, 
fairly easily. Um, so the waste pieces fetch a higher price. Uh, incomplete without his accessories, thirty nine seventy nine. Uh, just by himself, bare bones, nothing else, 65 bucks. Um, what's interesting with this guy, uh, you could actually buy his parts and build him cheaper than it would be to complete, uh, to buy him complete. Um, you still buy his parts, his accessories, all of that, and still save yourself a ton of money. So if that's if this is one action figure that you want to get, I do highly recommend that you do be careful with putting the weapons in their hands. Thumbs do break off real easy. Uh, I did that to my little light. Um, it just killed me. I, I just got him, and I put his rifle in his hand, knowing and... You know, knowing wasn't half the battle on that one. It's like, I could do it, I could do it. I'd get the rifle in and snap the thumb off. of the like, crap. Okay. <laughs> so, be careful. Um, so, yeah, I, I do highly recommend that you get this guy. He is cool. I love the um, paint apps on these guys. The vehicles are the same way. Uh, they're, it's just a really cool subset to get. Um, the vehicles are a little more expensive than average, but they are really neat vehicles. Um, I don't have any of those. Um, actually, I've just out of room to buy any vehicles. I could still stash action figures and boxes and stuff, but, um, so yeah, it, you want to get him, um, like I said, it'd be cheaper just to buy the parts and put them together yourself. Um, so there you have it, guys. Thank you very much for your support, for tuning in, for new subscribers. Um, Dell, hey, I saw that you um, subscribed. Thank you very much, buddy. I miss seeing you here on the channel. Um, welcome back. Uh Dell was actually one of the my original channel supporters. Um, uh, helped out with uh, my dad's funeral, so I very still won't forget that. I of course won't forget the funeral, but the help that people gave, um, I'll never forget that. So uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Thanks to all all my new subscribers. Uh, hey, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Please share uh, this video with your friends. Uh, I am on uh, Twitter. Uh, so you can find me under Joe Motion Videos 82 on Twitter. Uh, we could chat there if you'd like. You could shoot me an email. That'll be down in the description. Um, people have asked about my Facebook account. That uh, got frozen because of inactivity. Uh, I very rarely used Facebook um, just to reach out to my cousins. Um, yeah, so it just got closed down due to inactivity. So um, for those of you who were trying to, you know, who had sent me friend requests, I, I did hear about them, but I can't access my account. So if, best way to get a hold of me is on Twitter or my through my email. So there you have it, guys. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, remember um, to keep to wash your hands, please. Um, keep a safe distance, six feet apart. Wear a mask in public if you feel like you should. There's Actually, it's becoming a fashion statement anymore. Um, seeing some very interesting masks out there. Uh, there's no shame in that. Um, you know, your health is is paramount. It's it's priority. So, just real quick, I want to show you one of the tools of my trade. This right here is called an endotracheal tube, or we call it an ET tube. Uh, this is the tube that gets put down your throat when you can't breathe. 
when you're on a ventilator when you have surgery one of these gets put down your throat um, we essentially do just tilt your head back we have a tool called a little laryngeal scope has a long metal blade it's not a blade but it's called a blade we use that to lift up the inside stick it down your throat and lifts up your um, epiglottis um, open and pulls your tongue out of the way and we can see your vocal cords which is shaped like a v we take this tube insert it right between the vocal cords down into your lungs and on the end of this tube is a little balloon we inflate it through this part called a pilot balloon and that holds the tube in place so uh, if you want to avoid one of these and a guy like me sticking it down your throat wash your hands <laughs> plain and simple uh, so little PSA there but thank you guys very much for everything you you've done for me I do greatly appreciate it every one of you and as always be kind to everyone especially now and especially be kind to animals they know nothing but unconditional love so this is joe motion videos 82 signing off have a great day stay safe and if your baloney does not have a first name it is not oscar meyer talk to you later bye